Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to the final episode of Delicious Party Pretty Cure. So let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one, go. Nope, take two. <laughs> in three, two, one, go. There we go. So of course... Since it is the final episode, this is probably going to be the longest video because we got to go in. He just did it in his darkest way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Even the rice ball. Oh, only eating like say, come on, let's go eat. Oh my god. <laughs> Ah. That's how you start the beginning of the final episode, like, oof. You also kind of skip once again the, the opening. Once again. Star Twinkle did that ish when we were ready. When it was like, okay, it's time. It's time. Like, battle. We're going. No, we're going to do something different. Like, yeah, as much as I love this song, it's a cute song. Once, just once, you could have. You could have did it. You really could have. I mean, you know what? Honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, who knows if Hero Got O Sky is going to do that, especially, you know, when that start next week. I'm excited. <laughs> and of course, the the sad thing is because this is on Crunchyroll, we don't get to see the baton toss um between Yell and Raw One. Mm mm. Mm mm. Precious, yeah, oh, my names, my Cure names, I get mixed up too. <laughs> Between <laughs> Cure Precious and Cure Sky. But I already saw it, I loved it, it was cute. Even their art was adorable too. But I'm really excited, like bruh. A blue is headlining a series for a year, oh my god. 20th anniversary. How did she go? Oh. That's smart. But the corn. 
Is that a taco? Uh, that looks like a taco, but not really. But uh, it's just because this is the last episode. That means Mari. Oh, and come and come. Oh my God, I forgot. I even got come and come. She's on my bed. You just can't see her. Like Kudadun's right there. And let's see if I can get her. Ow! Hold on. I got her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, we gotta share it with the Kome Kome, like precious baby. Oh, even the princess! <laughs> Am I about to hold Kome Kome like a baby for their last of the remainder of the episode? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm gonna miss them together so much, oh my god! He knows that they got a lady. Oh my god! Bro, I'm just so happy I got her. Like, oh. I know, especially because she came last Monday. And I was like, yeah, if she has to be here for the finale, and I'm so happy.
<laughs> Please, for the love of God, show. Please show my babies as adults. We're only 10 minutes into this episode, okay? Do it. You've done it before. Do it again. I won't be as mad as if you don't, but it's okay. We'll probably talk about it for a good minute. That big behind cake, oh my god. <laughs> The last I get would be the coming of the game. Of course, one last time. One last time. I want to cry. Oh, my God. It's always sad. Jesus Christ. Like, ugh. <laughs> this dang series! Oh my god, my you just, you sit right there. Yes. If you can't. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> and then like watch her fall over. Well, that makes sense, yeah, yeah.
Oh, that looks so good. I want cake. <laughs> Finally, I'm going to go cry. <laughs> right? Huh? This is where we're ending it. Right here. Oh. It's becoming more real. Oh my god. I'm gonna cry, oh my god. Dígame. <laughs> Thank you.
Of course, you can't say no to that face. <laughs> hey, all right, hold on. Got a oh my, that big behind burger. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Alright. 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 No more tears. No more crying. Oh my god. No, no more crying. It's okay. <laughs> We're not crying anymore. Alright. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Mm -hmm. I, I need a moment. <laughs> oh. There we go, there she is! Ah. So that's how they met up. Oh, you need a pin! Well, Sora's got a pin. She's freaking perfect. That's all. All right. But before we go more into Sora, let's go in. Let's, we got to go back into this. So, all right. This is going to be a mm, semi-long-ish video because, like, the goal is always by the final episode um, to make it the longest because this is when we go very, like, in-depth but not too, too much. All right. So, Final thoughts on this show. This show was a journey. It, it really, truly was. I felt like this season, since we had now another show or another Pretty Cure series dealing with food and how everybody, when initially this came out and the thought of this, everybody was very skeptical because we had Kitty 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 I'm fucking up on it. Kitty 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 which, of course, is the first series that I reacted to. And, of course, that's going to be one that's going to be near and dear to my heart because I decided to react to it and stuff. Because, you know, watching the show as just watching it and stuff is completely different than reacting to it every single week. And, and so, um, going into this season, I was very skeptical as well. 
mainly due to the fact is I was like, we had a food season, but that was desserts and such. I was like, how is this gonna break the mark of Kira Kira and the, the things that Kira Kira brought us? And I think they did a pretty good job with it because the fact is it wasn't, it wasn't based on just desserts. It was based off of any type of food. So one minute we could have had onigiri. Next week we could have had pizzas or sandwiches or noodles or um, parfaits. We were going on like to several different things and not just distinctly desserts like Kira Kira did. Now, I do have some problems with this show. It, just like with every Pretty Cure series... As much as I say, oh my god, it's freaking perfect, and it's good as heck, and it's a masterpiece, it can still have some problems. So, I think we'll, we'll start with it character-wise. Let's go, instead of starting with Yui, we'll go backwards. Let's start with the secondary characters, and slowly but surely work our way to Yui. So, let's start with Mari. Alright, so, Mari is a character, honestly... That, okay, so literally instantly comparing him to like any, because I'm probably going to say this about talking to me as, as well. So comparing Mari to like Harry from Hagato or um, any type of, mm, I, it's between Harry, okay, so Ma uh, Mary, Harry, and... The two whose names I cannot, um, Coco and, Coco and Nuts. Okay, so comparing those four, heck, you can kind of put Picario in that mix as well. Um, but literally looking at Mari as a person, in the beginning, I was expecting us to get a load of, lots and lots and lots of episodes kind of really focus on him because Mari is the most mysterious. And so was Amane. Like, Amane was very mysterious up until we found out that she was gentle and everything and then, you know, trying to get her on the good side and such. But Mari was the biggest mystery character of them all. We barely really knew anything about him. There were weeks where, we, yeah, we immediately got to know things about him. But still, um, it kept me wanting more. And in the end, I felt like in this final episode, um, it, it gave me the answers I needed, especially like younger him in the flashback backstory that we got with him, where he just shares his final moments about the pretty years and wanting to be just as strong. So in a way, he kind of gives me feels to um, what's her face from Go Princess and how everybody wanted her to be, uh, like, the final pretty care of the show, but in the end, it was what's her name, it was the last princess, um, who ended up being the final cure, but everybody still considers her one, because she's, even though she's human, she did a lot for that show. Now, Mari really did do a lot, but at the same time, I do wish that we got to have episodes where we got to see him do a little bit more. I mean, it would have been nice to see, like, oh, hey, as I said in the beginning of the show, oh, I would like to see an episode where he has a crush on somebody. It's like that. You know, once again, showing um, love, whether it's between two. I mean, because you did it once again with Hagato. Hagato between the same sex or opposite sex, whatever. You're, you're showing that to kids and saying, hey, that is a new norm and that we're accepting of it and such. But yeah, I mean, Mari was a very interesting character. Mari was the always the mom or I like to say the the third the third mom of the group because of course Coco <laughs> Coco Day and Omane they were always the first and second moms and Yui and Ron were just the kids of the group but yeah I mean I'm kind of hoping that when we get into Hidago Sky next week and whoever is going to be there with the baby aka Kaguya-sama um, they're just as good as Mari and Harry and all the other guys and girls, whoever, the mascots, or even better and such. I mean, because, like, every season, each mascot is good. And I almost, in a way, say, like, the same things about them from, like, previous seasons. Okay, Takami. 
All right. So talk to me, in my opinion, going into, um, let's go into Saving the Territory like I did the first time. Um, talk to me, I felt like he was a really better character, um, in my opinion, because like, okay, so comparing him to like, ooh, <laughs> Mamoru from Sailor Moon, because I, I I was going to say, I already knew I was going to say it. Um, really, I, I just feel like Takumi had like more character development than Mamoru did. Now, you know, I think that's also because uh, Nakutaka Oji felt some certain type of way towards the original series, and that's why Crystal is very like, straightforward like a one-to-one -one version of the manga and I always still love that even though I have friends and other people that I know who are like iffy now with Takumi I instantly thought he was going to be very similar like 100% to Mamoru from Sailor Moon but they did him differently yes I love the fact that he got to be Black Pepper and that him and Yui were kicking butt almost every other week and such, um, I just, I hated it. it they, they did it in the last ish for this episode where it's like, oh my God, like, yes, you want to see these two together, but still, they're not together. But essentially, as I think somebody drew like a really nice fan art a couple weeks ago with Precious and Black Pet together, it's canon. It, no matter what I say, what everybody else says, it's canon. We know that eventually it's going to happen with these two. I just think it would have been better if we got to see it in the show instead of being like, okay, well, yeah, you know, she asks him, hey, you want to go around the world and look at all the find the lucky, lucky cats with me? And I thought it was cute that she asked him first because their friendship has blossomed even more from the beginnings of the show even to the end of the show especially in the moments like when fennel attacked his dad and everything and how he instantly saw red and he went after him and then precious goes after him and she tries to like stop him and they have a moment together like you can feel that emotion with them so i really once again have to say like the saves in that moment or just any moment with Takumi and Yui, like, they did really good on it. There were times where if one of them was down, the other one was able to pick the other one back up. Like, literally any episode where one of those two had moments where they were down and either Takumi came in or Yui came in, you felt that love and that connection that they had with each other. But at the same same time, you're over here like, yeah, when are y'all gonna get together? And everybody was like that, including Mari. And you just wanted it to happen. And, and so I think if the show had initially gotten like a couple of more episodes before the finale, um, officially as of today, we would have gotten to see them together. I think we would have had an older moment where it's the modern day future and they're together and they possibly have a kid very similar to like when hana from hugato wanted a baby and by the end of the series in the last episode she had a baby so i mean yes that would have been nice like truly but like mm, you just didn't do it but it's okay i'm not mad in my opinion they canon they are canon regardless but let's also talk about the adult thing um okay so this has kind of now been the new trending thing um, for Pretty Cure, mainly because of healing good. So of course, because due to COVID and the fact that they had to cut their episodes down, we're now getting endings where we don't get to see them as adults and such. And it, it, mm, I'm still at mixed feelings. Because I think always the best thing about it is to see the growth and how the girls and anyone else is from the beginning of the series to the end. So you can see just how far they've come. And then they're using the tools and the lessons that they've learned when they were younger into adulthood. And it makes it also boys and girls who watch this show and even adults like me or teenagers or whoever who watch the show as well just be like, okay, you have to take those lessons. You just, you know, 
go on with your life and such. And that's the one thing that I love about this series because every year, by the time we finish the show, I always learn different things about myself. And I'm like, damn, <laughs> Jesus. But I mean, yeah, it would have been nice to see the adult versions. I mean, heck, I wanted that last year with Tropical Ruse, like, so freaking bad. I would have loved and killed to see an adult Laura, an adult Manasu, um, and the rest of the girls. Atsuka, um, it's not Nagisa. Oh my, oh my god, I don't remember their names. There's two I'm missing. Coral and Papaya. Um, but still, those five, I would have loved to seen them older, and especially, you know, for Papaya, and, you know, because she was writing stories, and it would have been awesome to see her older and, and being, like, the bestseller, or something, or, you know, Coral, you know, continuing on with her makeup and owning, you know, the, the shop that her mom has and stuff, and then Asuka, you know, being the greatest tennis player and stuff. And then, you know, Laura being a queen because she's always freaking queen and such. Regardless, because she a queen, best girl, best mean girl of last year with Anya. But yeah, like, damn. You know, there, there's so many things that we get to miss out because of the cuts and stuff. I was like that even at the end of Healing Good because I was like, I was super ready to see those three. Plus, um, what's her face? as well even though she could not age regardless but seeing those three our main three growing up into adults and venturing out into the world about what they wanted to do for the rest of their lives wanted to see chiyu go to the olympics um nadoka being the best that she could be because i don't even remember what nadoka wanted to be and do and then um what the heck was her name? I barely remember her name, too. Um, what's her face? Literally being, like, doing stuff with fashion design. Because she, we all knew she loved to shop and loved clothes and loved anything cute. But, like I said, due to COVID, their time crunch now sort of messes up trying to get the remainder of the episodes out. So, maybe they do have something. Once again, I've said this last year, and I said this even with Healing Good. But... We'll never get to see those. Those will now be locked into storage at, at Toei Animation Studios. And only a certain amount of people will be able to see that. Um, okay. So we just did, we did the adults. We did talking. All right. So let's talk about our core four. Let's start with best girl. Miss Amane. All right. This girl. Love the fact that she was a student council president. This was a girl that was broken truly and you could really emphasize and sympathize with her with almost every episode that she was in especially if she had like any sweet moment with coconut now my thing was <laughs> it was so funny because literally I, and i got it and i really got it and i was just like oh my god yay okay so when we found out or when it was spoiled that she was the final character. I was very excited. But my thing was, I was like, all right, so how are we getting that journey? Finding out, you know, bad guy, da 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 da. And then seeing her backstory and especially, you know, the parfait recipe coming to her and being like, and acting a certain way, another Laura. Like, we had like two different versions of Laura in the show. Um, literally coming in. Not on a high horse, but just saying that she loves her and that she's okay with being not like this perfect thing because in a way she kind of saw herself always as a perfectionist and such. And so when she was able to knock that wall down, she was able to just be this normal girl. Yeah, there was a lot of pressure on her and there were times where the girls, especially slowly but surely when she came ask your finale she didn't want to do it she she gave me very much um kiraran is it kiranin or kiranan kiran kiranan yeah aka cure twinkle vibes of when she officially left the group after her her debut appearance and then like another week later she was like no i want to be a pretty here and such and i thought they were gonna do that with 
you know, Amane. Like, she transforms. She secretly likes it. But at the same time, that danger and how afraid she is. And she feels like she can't protect food or the things that she loves and cares about. Which we kind of got that. But I thought it would have been much longer. But it was so good regardless. Now, any of her moments with Yui, Coco, um... I'm about to say Kome Kome. Kohane or even Ron was really sweet because the fact is she got to learn more about herself, learn more about the girls. Like any episode when it was focusing on the girls or whoever got the main focus was truly the best. And Amane will always be one of those girls and it's always typically my favorite. The final ones are always my favorite regardless. But I have to say her, her Seiyu's performance top tier every single week her say you just went in there there was never a moment where like someone wasn't overpowering her she was always the highlight you could tell also and it happens with every season of pretty care it's either the final the blue or as everybody's favorites why because usually at, in the end the blue and the and the final cure always get the most favorite episodes. They will always get the most focused out of whoever's in the freaking group, regardless. Now, that's kind of maybe a little different when you look at maybe Kitta or maybe Go Princess and such. But usually, it is always sometimes the blue and the final one. Like, if we could go back and count how many episodes we had of Amane, it was a lot. Like, truly, and, you know, that that's the point. Because I remember with Kita Kita, people got sick of that. Um, with Parfait and such. But I was like, no, she a fan favorite. She, we gotta like her. Okay, so moving on to Ron. Ron, mm, my baby from, my other baby from Simpo Gear. My, my mind. <laughs> my precious baby mind. I really don't have that much to say about her. I, I think, you know, her Seiyu did a did beautiful, amazingly beautiful job. But I don't know why. And I can say I can say the same thing of how I said with Healing Good. Um the yellow cures sometimes just always like don't get they get the half ass sort of end of the stick. And it sucks because they're just as good, if not, like, on that same par with everyone else. And it feels like they're the ones who always get the least amount of focuses in episodes. Now, Ron had some good behind episodes. I think my favorite is the one with the Garu, um, and the other girl doing that show, even though it still also had to do with Yui. Um, anything focusing on her shop... Her freaking um, Instagram page, that was the best thing. And I think truly if we got to see her as an adult, we would have saw that. And so I kind of wish even in the final episodes, we got to see more of that. Like I even love when they use that to, you know, stop the villain of the week. That was just like the best thing. But yes, I mean, she was very underrated. I And I hate that because she was just such a good character and stuff and so i know a lot of people will say oh amane was overrated and so was um coconut and such and it kind of felt like that at times and that's why like when you look at yui and ron like yeah they didn't get that most focused episodes but i honestly really i can't say anything else more about her i think she was a very interesting character like i said her say you did a damn good job on her I love the moments between her and freaking Amane because the Simpho gear feels were there and you were always like in that embrace. You're like, oh my God, I miss them. <laughs> I, I need them to get there again in my life. Like Jesus. All right. Miss Kokone. <laughs> Our, like my fashion baby. Okay. My lovely fashion baby. Mm. This one's hard. I would say... Mm, she was interesting. Very shy and timid. Typical, like, 
majority of the blue cures and such but she was able to figure out what she wanted to do in her life very quickly majority of the blue cures are able to have moments i feel like she's very similar to um i think her also her name was saya um from hagato and her issuing and wanting to be an actress and such and mm -hmm. but with coconut and her love for sandwiches and ish i also would have loved it and, and they did it in like her introduction episode the the cute little relationship that they had with her and yuri i kind of wish they did more on that but they they kind of did and they did it just with kokone being friends with yui ron and amane and such but you just wanted more of it because i was like oh they're so freaking cute together and you could just have them together because there's only one canon um pretty cute couple that is together and that's <laughs> that's a car I'm in Chagala from Can I Get a Pretty Girl Mode. And you want, like, hopefully another season like that happens again. But, Ko uh, <laughs> she was always the mommy. Always, you know, wanting to take care of the girls. Like, being a leader whenever Yui was not a leader. And same thing with Amane. Because even towards the end of it, they both came together. Even, like, Amane more. A lot. We all know that. But, I mean, yeah, I, I really just wish we kind of got a little bit more on her. Very interesting. We'll definitely miss her in the other three as much. And finally, our main character, Yui. For Yui, I feel like Yui, I think Yui, if I had to say this, Yui episodes and Amane episodes were really the best. Of course, my number one fave, and then my second fave. Number one fave, of course, was the episode where they got to go back in time and Yui got to see her grandma again. And that, like, hit home a lot. That I think that first time in a while that I had cried, um, I think, you know, in a while with Pretty Care, except, you know, going back to freaking Tropical Rouge and such, because I know I did cry during Tropical Rouge. But it hit home mainly because of the fact, and I even said on Twitter, I was like, Everyone who probably watched this episode kind of wish that they got like a second chance with their grandparents and to just be there with them one last time or to just even hang out with them one last time. And it really hit. It's been several years since my grandma passed and I miss her every single freaking day. Like my mom looks exactly like her and such. And you still feel that warmth and love, but you still wish that person was here physically with you and especially when you have your hard moments and you need someone else to talk to besides your parents and stuff your grandparents are always there to listen and you could really emphasize with Yui because going into losing um a grandparent family member however like I really thought they would have went in depth and there were times that they did and I really hope that Pretty Here eventually in other series goes more in depth in losing someone truly that you care about because that is something different. I honestly love when this series really goes into dark moments. Hagato, for an example, and the bullying situation. That was a very dark moment. Healing Good did it too with the Nautica situation. And we did it a little bit with this, but we just didn't go more in depth. So that's the big thing. And of course, the second one is the princess episode. I felt like that was like, if, if we didn't get the grandma episode flashback, oh, that would have been number one for me because we got to see Yui in a different light and just seeing her, you know, be a princess for a day. I think that was really, truly when Yui came into her own, not only as a character, but as a person. And I honestly feel like the Seiyu maybe would say that is her personal favorite episode. I think majority of the animators will say that episode or the grandma episode flashback is their current fave. I, I think a lot of people, the day those two episodes aired, possibly had maybe a little more of the grandma episode, had a tearful moment because damn well knows I did. I, I cried my butt off before 
even selling like uh the manga the manga artist for the pretty cure series drawing the art of you and your grandma together and then watching the episode crying and then editing the episode crying again so regardless that day was just a big old tear fest for me but i mean yeah i will love these girls regardless just as much as i love all the other girls of the series so but really final thoughts it was a damn good show i will miss it a lot I will miss the transformations. I, I One thing I won't miss is Yui's shoes and memeing on Yui's shoes for when she transformed into Precious. Everybody did not let, like them shoes. I, I think those were the least favorite shoes of all the freaking pretty girls. But we are now moving on into the future. So Miss Sora, I, I think she's going to be, she's going to bring something different but kind of give me feels towards you know summer aka miss manasu um i am excited for this show i'm always excited for freaking pretty girl i'm trying to hurry up and wrap up because i i'm, I'm at 51 minutes and i can only go over an hour um i think this cast is phenomenal majority of them i know in, from other shows and things like that and then little things but i think for Sora Seiyu, I think this is also her first time leading or first big role. I think, you know, also with Yubi Seiyu, she did a damn good job. It is really hard for girls or Seiyus, especially when they're starting up and their first big gig is a pretty cure show. I, I have to commend them for a year about like, on, on doing that because when you get to like big Seiyus and they're the headliner, oh, it's completely different. Like you already know that say you was going to do good because you've seen them in so many other things and you know how much their range is but when you go into someone like you we say you and sora say you and you've never really seen them and other things you're skeptical it's very much how and i've said this again um the doctor who um ish you know you meet the new doctor you don't know how you feel about them then you like them and then they give me, um, they change it to a newer doctor and that cycle starts, starts all over again. And that's where we are with Sora, aka Kira Sky. Right now, I like her. But at the same time, I miss Yui and everyone else. And I'm skeptical. But I think by next Saturday, it'll be completely different. I know I will fall in love with her. I'm already in love with her as a character and her style and everything. Once again, love the fact that a blue cure for the 20th anniversary is now a leader. We're changing the game. And that gives me hope that eventually when we get to the 30 year, a yellow cure takes it. And whoever that yellow cure is, like, wow. Like, it's a stepping stone. And I think they're going to learn that, the, cause she's a testing ground. She really is a testing ground to be like, okay, if this goes well, we know what to do. And I think she's going to do a damn good job, especially seeing her in the last little moments. Like, she shined. And I think she's going to shine so freaking well in her series. And she's going to do well. And honestly, I cannot wait. But other than that, I need to go ahead and end it here. Other than that, guys, that is my reaction for you towards the entirety of Delicious Party Pretty Cur. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day. Join the Matcher Squad. And of course, I will see you guys. So, let's say one of two things. Because I still need to do this for uh, Tropical Cruise. So, whenever the movie comes out. And whenever I have free time, I will watch it. Same thing with the Tropical Cruise movie. Because I need to watch that, like, ASAP. And then I will officially see you guys. Mm, next Saturday or Sunday. For the first episode of Hero Gato Sky Pretty Cure. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye!